Turn in your Bibles today if you have them with you. If not, there, one, there should be one in the pew if you would like to, to, um, to use it. Uh, and I'd like to begin in Romans chapter 1 today and then go to Romans 10. Two passages in Romans to begin with. Not, not too often in my life have I done a part one, part two, and um, it's one of those things I heard uh, two weeks ago that sort of inspired part two. And then I went back to the person that said it to me and they go, well, I don't remember saying that to you. Well, so that's fascinating. Um, talking about uh, what happens when the message of God comes into our lives, when that message, how powerful is that message? And this, um, this again is focusing on the power of God through the word of the message that comes to our lives. And uh, so Romans chapter one, um, uh, repeating some words that uh, we read uh, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, verse uh, 15, let me pick up on verse 15. And this is the Apostle Paul is, is saying this. He says, so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For it is the righteousness of God, for, for, for in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In other words, if you're going to live a, a life pleasing in God's sight, if you're going to live a life that steers away from sin, you, it'll never happen unless you live by faith. Living and walking by faith, how can you get your heart in the direction of faith? How can you go from less faith to more faith? It's the same question, how do you, can you go from more sin to less sin? Turn to Romans 10. By the way, a lot of this stuff is talked about in the book of Romans. The book of Romans, um, there's a lot of things really basic to faith in Romans. Romans chapter 10. And uh, picking up with verse 8, maybe you've heard this, th these couple verses, but I'm really targeting down uh, a few more verses. So uh, let's read the familiar verses and then get to some other verses maybe you have, have not seen. Romans 10 verse 8 says, what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So faith is what? It's close to your mouth. It's as close as you, what you believe in your heart. That's how close you are to faith. Verse 9, that if, if you, that's you dear, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, what does that mean? That means you say, Jesus is my Lord. I'm confessing Jesus. I'm confessing the Lord Jesus. I'm making him my savior. He's my Lord and savior. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
very essential things to faith in Christ. Confessing it with your mouth, believing in you. Now, you've, either you've done that or you haven't. That's, that's really true. Either you've done it or you haven't done it. Have you done that? And then uh, let's, let's uh, see a few more things there. It says, the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. What's that really talking about? That's really talking about being released from the guilt and shame of sin and what you might have to be ashamed about. And if you go into him, if you receive him, if he is your savior, it gets you out of the shame. So do you need him? Do you need the Lord? For there is no distinction between the Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Verse 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you calling? Are, see, you see this, there is salvation available, but you need to pursue it. How then shall they call on him? By, by the way, we're gonna trace how faith gets into you. Now, do you need to call on him? Have you called on him? It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in, who, in whom they have not heard? And how shall, shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And then... Uh, sort of a concluding verse, uh, jumping to verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And suddenly we're to the point where the power of salvation originates. The word of God. And the issue is is the word of God reaching you. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this Lord's day, for the opportunity to be gathered once again in this place and to know, Lord, you're working in presence here and in our lives. Lord, how important it is for us to know your word to have your word available, to have your word on a regular basis entering our lives. And we're glad, Father, for Sunday school teachers and for preachers and for those that proclaim and those that uh, spread abroad the things of the kingdom of God from the scriptures. Thank you, Lord. Bless us unto greater faith. Father, we pray it. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. When I was a very young man, I remember this. Yeah, I was either nine or ten years old, and um, I was sitting in church next to the window. It, uh, by the way, I, I formally could say I could take you <clears throat> to exactly to the place where that was because the building, the, that old church building was still standing. I found out from my aunt recently that that church building burnt to the ground, um, an old, old, old uh, EUB church building. But I remember sitting on a Sunday morning, uh, sitting there and, and hearing the word of the cross and it made a connection in me for the very first time. Oh, what Jesus did on the cross was for me. And the entrant, and I would trace that the faith I have today goes back 
to that spark. What God wants you, many, many here know exactly what I'm talking about, how God sparked faith in your life and that it was a powerful thing. You experienced a certain amount of power of the Word of God in your life. Now, several weeks ago, we talked about the, you know, God's ability to speak and have it be for God to say, let there be light, and there was light. Uh, can you do anything like that? Don't, don't answer too quickly on that. You are created in the image of God. And while, while I, I, I personally am not able to say, let there be light and then light just sort of shines, there is something I can do. I can take that word of God and when I speak that word, there is a power of God. Did you know you could do that? There are people all around you that need that. There are people all around, all, there are people all over that need the Lord, that they need the salvation of God. And it is in the speaking, the proclamation, you know, there's, it's one thing to receive Christ, to believe in your heart, confess it with your mouth, and you say, this Savior is my Savior, and to settle that issue. And to experience, listen, listen closely, to experience the transformation that can happen in the depths of your heart when, when you invite God to save you. When you call on the name of the Lord and he saves you. And that's one thing. But it's quite another thing to say, all right, it's there, now what? Did you know that it is vital in experiencing the work of the Holy Spirit for you not just to have it in your life, but to bring forth what is true, the testimony of that from your life. And if you don't bring it forth somehow, some way, uh, at minimum, the expression on your face. Now, if you, there might be a few of you here, it looks like you had uh, raw lemons for breakfast. But most of you look pretty cheerful. Did you know that, that praising the Lord and cheerfulness is an evidence of God's Spirit? Did you know that? Praise the Lord. For you to bring forth the praises of God out of your life, for you to have that sense of rejoicing in God does, cannot happen without the Holy Spirit. Now, what did, what, did, uh, what did the Lord tell his disciples before he departed? Acts chapter 1. You're, we're in Romans there. Go to, go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Jesus tells his disciples, and he tells you too. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power you receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now don't tell me that, that when you ask Jesus into your heart that the Holy Spirit doesn't come in. <laughs> when else? What else? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. The whole purpose of the Holy Spirit and the power of God being there and being upon us if we receive it is that we would be witnesses. 
And we would, be, you know, I heard a man say one time, it, it was not uh, the best English, but it's true. <laughs> you know, good, not good English, but it's true. He says, you know, it's better to, to not say that you've seen something if, if you really didn't see something. What is he saying? If you didn't see it, don't say it. But if you saw it, what can you witness to? What is the witness from your life? What has God done that you know for sure in your life? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith comes into your life. You hear the gospel message. You give your life to Christ. Christ brings his Holy Spirit into you. And then you're, gonna, you're just going to roll over and play dead. Going to play possum. No. To bring forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because I bet there's somebody you know that desperately needs it. Look, uh, just right across the page there at, at Acts, chapter, Acts chapter 2. Maybe the best uh, single passage in all of Scripture talking about uh, the preached word. And let me just rehearse what happened in Acts chapter 2. It was the power of preaching by the Holy Spirit. This, is, this was done by the man Peter. He had heard Jesus say, and uh, where, where, where's the verse? I've got it written down here something. Matthew chapter 10, verses 18 to 20. He had heard Jesus say, the Holy Spirit will give you the words when you need it. And so here's the day of Pentecost, the day of promise from God. And they have waited in Jerusalem. They have prayed in Jerusalem. They have sought God from their hearts. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, here comes the power of God. And suddenly they're speaking other languages which they had never learned. Were they human languages? They might have been, at least some of them, because they were sort of apparently babbling on about praising God and some of the people there said, you know, oh, they're just drunk. And Peter took that as an opportunity to proclaim something. And so look around and you see what the need is. When there, when there is a serious misunderstanding for the things of God, you are a witness to the things of the kingdom of God and bring forth the testimony and believe that the Holy Spirit will be directing your words and in your words. Believe that. What did Peter say? Well, from uh, verses, and I'm not gonna read the passage, but you can go home and, and study this. Uh, Peter, he stood up, and that's verse uh, 14. And there's a little bit of an introduction he gives. He gives, uh, he uh, quotes a passage from uh, the, the Old Testament prophet Joel, verses 17 to 21, about the Holy Spirit coming. And he tells the people what you are seeing right here and right now on this day of Pentecost is what Joel said. And you see it happening. And that's verse 22. And then Peter brings testimony. Now he had what? For the first time he had, he had not only had the Holy Spirit with him, he had the Holy Spirit in him. And from that, he proclaimed what he knew was true. And uh, let me just sort of break it down for you. Uh, the explanation is, uh, runs from verse 22 to verse uh, 36 about um, uh, the first, first thing he says is that the life that Jesus lived demanded that he be raised from the dead. 
Do you know that the, that the person of Jesus, the righteousness that he lived, the death he died, he could not stay in the grave. And Peter proclaimed that. And that is verses 22 to 24. And then uh, G, uh, uh, the apostle Peter regarding Jesus um, goes back to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms. Uh, so actually Psalm 16, and this is verses 25 to 31. He quotes from David in the Psalms, and he says, it was predicted in the Psalms, in Psalm uh, 16, that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead. That the Messiah was not, he was going to come out of the grave. The third thing Peter tells them uh, is in verse uh, 32. Um, he tells them now, some of us have been following Jesus and we, are with, we saw this ha all this stuff take place. We saw him crucified, dead, buried, and we know he's alive. And so he bore witness. The Holy Spirit was there to give Peter the ability to proclaim were his witnesses. The fourth thing that Peter talks about in his message on the day of Pentecost was um, the, uh, that, that the Holy Spirit is the proof that Jesus is alive. The fact that the Holy Spirit came on that day and an amazing thing that the Holy Spirit did in the believers Peter said, this is the proof. And that is verse 33. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. And so Peter was just simply what? Telling them what he knew. Right then, right there. And then the final thing that... Uh, uh, Peter explains, and this is verses 33 through um, 35. Um, he refers back to Psalm um, 110 verse 1 about uh, the promise of the resurrection and how the, how the Lord has triumphed in it all. And, and then Peter said to them, and you are the guys you know, he's talking to the, everybody else there. He says, you are the guys that crucified him. <laughs> and you know what those, many of those people saw? And it could be, it could happen when you share your faith in Christ with someone else, they'll see their need. Because until a person sees their need, they will never as Christ into their life. And these, these Jewish people that had, maybe some of them had been there when they yelled out, crucify him. They said, well, what do we do? And the simple thing of the gospel, the power of God is let the word of God do the work Peter said, believe, believe and be baptized. And the promise we've received, you'll get to. And you can tell everyone in your circle of friends that whatever you have, whatever is true, whatever you have seen, and you've really seen it, whatever, that, whatever the dimension of that is, from the, from the Word of God, not just your imagination. Be careful about imagining things. But if it's connected to the Word of God, you can say, yeah, you can have it too. And you can have it now and you can have it today. And would you like to pray? Would you? And then what do you do? You trust God, the Holy Spirit, to perform those things in them just like he did in you. 
And what, what is fascinating to me is that God, we, we, people come and go, but God, God is always there. And from a, age nine, when I was sitting next to that window in church, it was until I was 22, until, I, until it really, really sunk in. It entered there and became full blown when I was 22. And you trust God to do the work. And, and whatever, whatever the power of God is there, it will be performed. God's faithful to perform uh, his word. I'm going to close with uh, just a couple verses here. And um, uh, one of them is, is really... Uh, uh, one of those verses that, that is just so key to your understanding. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, a good verse to, to memorize. Uh, this, this is a good one to give people. But I give it to you today as a preacher from the pulpit. I give this verse to you. This verse alone is enough to save your soul. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you going into Christ or out of Christ? If you're in Christ, go into him. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Creations don't happen without power from God. What is the power of a new creation in you? Settle that. Believe in that. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are, have become new. And then let me conclude where I started two weeks ago is back in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm giving you time to find it while I find it. <laughs> Sometimes I mark these in, in uh, my pages. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 says, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words. Now, my, whole, my whole venture this morning is not how, somehow to be so, so smart with words. Uh, that's, not, that's missing the point. You can wow people with how smooth your words are. It's, it's, it's missing it. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be made of no effect. What you're after is that what happened on that cross that happened in you happens in others. That's the point. That the power of that word be transforming. Have you been transformed? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And if, if someone is not really, if they're not really interested, don't push it on them because they're just going to think you're crazy in the first place. Those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It's, it's a life-changing, life-transforming power, not different than when God said, let there be light. This is God speaking into a life, somehow, some way, entering their ears, getting it into their lives, so they believe it in their hearts, and they themselves confess it with their mouth. Verse uh, 23 of that same passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, We preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, to the Greeks, foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, 
for a soul-saving gospel. But help us see the importance of that declaration. Lord, may our lives be spirit-filled. May our lives be energized. That's really what spirit-filled means, to be energized, to be proclaimers. Lord, to share the love of Christ, the love of the cross, the power of that cross into the hearts and lives of those around us. Help us to see this challenge today. Father, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.